Hello, my name is Dr. Omide, and I'm going to continue with uh, a lecture series on histology of the of the liver and gallbladder. So we had described the classical lobule, um, the hexagonal shape, then the portal lobule, describing how bile um, flows in the triangular um, uh, shape uh, lobule, and then we discussed the portal assigners basically describing the oxygen and nutrient flow where it's highest towards the the, the portal uh, where the hepatic artery and portal veins are so we now go to the blood supply of the liver so we have sinusoids that are very close to the hepatocytes as you can see here remember we said hepatocytes radiate from a central vein and in between the hepatic rays you have sinusoids which are endothelial lined channels containing blood and between the sinusoids and the hepatocytes we have the space of this so you can see the space of this here so sinusoids are very close to the hepatocytes and that helps to exchange material from the liver cells to the blood and from the blood to the liver cells so the sinusoids eventually they um, drain the blood um, to a venous network through which the blood now leaves the liver so as you can see the sinusoids are emptying into the huge the large veins in the liver so hepatocytes are actually the most versatile cells in the body and as you can see in this image this is the central vein hepatocytes radiating away from the central vein and in between you have sinusoids lined by endothelium okay so the hepatocytes have both endocrine and exocrine function okay so they they also are able to synthesize proteins and cholesterol they're able to detoxify in terms of um, drugs and steroids and um, help to transport various selected substances this image again just shows you this is a hepatocyte uh, separated from sinusoids by space of dc and this is your endothelial cells that's lining the sinusoids and appreciate the presence of the kufa cells which are members of the monocytic phagocytic system that play an immune role so what are the functions of uh, histological features of hepatocytes? So you need to remember the functions for you to be able to recall the histological features. So remember, they are protein synthesizing cells. So they are large polyhedral cells and they have a large and round nuclei, often binucleated and polypoid. Okay. And the periphery of the nucleus contains dispersed chromatin. You can see at the periphery you have dispersed chromatin and the nucleoli is prominent. So a large nucleus prominent nucleola with periphery um, chromatin at the nucleus okay then remember they synthesize plasma proteins such as fibrinogen and albumin so therefore they have abundant rough endoplasmic reticulum as you can see here then they synthesize cholesterol so therefore they will have abundant smooth endoplasmic reticulum they metabolize lipid uh, soluble drugs and steroids therefore they will have abundant peroxisomes they will have they aid in fat metabolism so they will have abundant smooth endoplasmic reticulum and they will have cytoplasmic vacuoles they help with glycogen storage and release okay as well as secretion of of bile so those are the functions of the hepatocyte and that is able to explain um the, the the histological structures so this is a hepatocyte you can appreciate here and this is the endothelium of the sinusoid and space of this between the hepatocyte and the sinusoid. So um, the hepatocytes are separated from the endothelium of the sinusoids by the space of this. And this is what this shows you the hepatocyte radiate like in rays. And then this is the space of this. These are the endothelial cells. Um, of lining the, the sinusoids where blood is flowing. So we go to the histology of the gallbladder. So the gallbladder is a pear shaped organ and it's usually very distensible and has a volume of 50 mils in humans. So it's on the uh, posterior inferior um, uh, surface of the liver. This is the gallbladder, this is the liver. And from the gall, remember, gallbladder stores and concentrates bile. The liver hepatocytes produce bile, then through biliary canaliculi, this bile um, is able to get to the um, gallbladder for storage and concentration. So from the gallbladder, 
Baal now um, is able to live to get to the GIT. But remember, the right and the left lobes of the liver, they are ducts fused. So you have the right hepatic duct and left hepatic duct. They fuse to form a common hepatic duct. Common hepatic duct will be joined by the cystic duct from the gallbladder to form the common bile duct. To be joined by cystic duct from the gallbladder to form the common bile duct. And this common bile duct is joined by the main pancreatic duct at the posterior medial part on the second part of the duodenum they open at the ampulla of vata which is guarded by the sphincter of odi okay so that's the hepatopancreatic ampulla at that area which is the ampulla of vata that's guarded by the sphincter of odi so the gallbladder stores bile and also concentrates bile so the lining of the gallbladder because of this ability to concentrate bile they have features of ion transporting cells. So the simple columnar epithelium of the gallbladder has features of ion transporting cell, such as basal invagination and um, apical brush border or microvilli. So what are the histological features of the gallbladder? So you have um, the main layers, mucosa, and remember the mucosa of the gallbladder is thrown into temporary fold. What do you mean temporary fold? When the gallbladder fills up and is distended, the folds disappear. That's what it means. So the lining is simple columnar epithelium with microvilli, apical microvilli. Below the epithelium, you have lamina propria made up of loose connective tissue and lymphatic tissue. After the lamina propria, you have a fibromuscular layer made up of fibrous, um, elastic fib fibers. Okay, so a connective tissue, mainly elastic fiber and smooth muscle cell. That's why we call it fibromuscular layer. After fibromuscular layer, you have perimuscular connective tissue containing uh, neurovascular structures. And lastly, the outermost layer, which is serosa, mainly connective tissue. So mucosa, lamina propria, fibromuscular, perimuscular, and serosa. Those are the five layers of the gallbladder wall. So the um, uh, mucosa we said it's thrown into folds and you can appreciate that. And it's simple columnar epithelium with brush border or microvilli. And below the, muco the epithelium, you have the lamina propria. So both the epithelium and lamina propria form the mucosa before you get to the fibromuscular layer, which is smooth muscle cell and elastic fiber. And then after fibromuscular layer, you get to the perimuscular uh, layer before you get to the serosa. So, the mucosa also, uh, we have said is simple columnar epithelium, and you can appreciate the microvilli. The microvilli are usually numerous, and we've said it's an adaptation for, uh, to enable it to, the gallbladder to concentrate by. The lamina propria contains loose connective tissue, mainly fenestrated capillaries and small venules and there are no lymphatic vessels in the lamina propria. So basically this is um, your lamina uh, propria before you get to the fibromuscular layer. Now this lamina propria may contain mucus secreting glands. Yeah, and these mucus secreting glands are more at the neck of the gallbladder, okay? And mainly when the gallbladder is inflamed, cholecystitis. So the mucus glands are in the lamina propria, mainly at the neck and commonly in inflamed gallbladder. The lamina propria, apart from mucus glands, it also contains enteroendocrine cells. And these are um, cells that will produce substances that are able to regulate the peristalsis. So despite that the gallbladder is from the foregut, unlike other GI areas, it lacks muscularis mucosa. Remember, for most of the hologi, we said you have mucosa that contains epithelium, lamina propria, and muscularis mucosa. The gallbladder lacks muscularis mucosa. So from epithelium, you move to lamina propria before you get to the fibromuscular layer. The lamina propria um, contains some smooth muscle bundles that are randomly oriented, and the contraction of this smooth muscle are able to reduce the the volume of the gallbladder, and that way it's able to force the content out through the cystic duct. Then there's the um, muscularis externa. 
of the fibromuscular layer, mainly made up of smooth muscle cells and connective tissue. Smooth muscle cell and connective tissue, collagen and elastic fiber. So this is the muscularis layer, okay? Then, before you get to serosa, which is mainly connective tissue made up of elastic fiber and adipose. So this is serosa. So you have mucosa, simple columnar epithelium with microvilli, lamina propria before you get to the fibromuscular layer and perimuscular layer. So those we in presence of smooth muscle, so that's the muscularis layer before you get to the serosa containing connective tissue and adipose. In the next lecture series, we'll discuss the histology of the, of 